Hello, and welcome back to The Sim. In this one, we're jumping back in the PMDG 737-700. And yes, we're still here on the ground at CYOW, as we're not getting off until we get all of our hardware configured. In this one, we're doing the VA MCP, Virtual Avionics MCP, but this applies to any of the 737 MCPs as they all share similar configurations. So let's jump inside and get all of our buttons mapped. So the MCP or the mode control panel is the most important device in the sim. Well, maybe not, but it is today because I wanna get mine configured because I really wanna go fly this plane. So the first thing we need to do is get our virtual avionics MCP running inside of SPAD.next. Now similar type things will apply to a different vendor's MCP. So let's now jump over to SPAD next and run through it. When you launch SPAD.next, of course, if you have never configured an MCP before, you're gonna to need to go to settings, devices, and find your vendor in the list. So it could be GoFlight, in which case you wanna make sure that the MCP is enabled, or maybe it's open cockpits and you want their PMP devices enabled. So as you can see, there's always gonna be a bunch of different ones and for some of them, they're serial-based devices, so you're gonna to have to come into the serial device, add a new device, pick the port and the correct device. With virtual avionics, the part I have, I come in and I make sure that the virtual avionics devices are enabled, and then I enable support for the models I have, like the MCP and the APHIS. Of course, if this was not completed before you came in, you're going to need to close pad on next and relaunch. And in the case of virtual avionics, also make sure that their software is shut down so that they're not conflicting. Now that we've done that, when we head over to our panel section, it will now be available in our list. Again, after a restart. So here we've got the VAMCP 737R. This is a representation of my unit. Now you'll notice I do not have any virtual power. This is another example of a functionality that in settings, you're gonna find under application settings, you'll see that I have disabled virtual power completely. So I don't run it. If you do run virtual power, this will be different. And I just wanna stress it. You have to set up your power settings as to what will trigger the power to come on and off because SPAD will virtually turn it on and off. So you'd probably want to link this to the battery. So for those of you that already have an MCP, you're ready to go and say, hey, um, it's great to learn, but really, I don't care to learn. I just want it. No problem. If you haven't already found out, you must be on this version uh, or, um, yes, the alpha or higher. Uh, for these snippets to be found. Remember, if you're on the release channel, you're not going to get them because they are different. They don't have support. Can't go backwards in time now that new functionality has been added. All right. Easiest way to get started is click on anything so that your online snippets become available. When I click on online snippets, you're going to see, obviously for me, I go to complete device, and if I search for... Les O'Reilly, I'm going to find all of the published uh, MCPs and MCP devices. Now, keep in mind that you may want to turn off only for current aircraft. And this is because I needed to publish it without a specific aircraft, because otherwise I'd have to go through every single possible livery and make sure it was available. So as long as you go to complete device and you disable only for current aircraft, you're gonna find it. And this is the one. And of course you click okay. And then it's gonna ask you to replace all devices and you would say yes. I'm gonna say no, cause I'm obviously configured. There you go. Now you got everything working and it works just fine. For those of us who want to know, hey, I have a different device or I have a SciTech panel or I've got a Bravo panel, right? The Honeycomb Bravo. How do I configure these devices? What's the easiest way in working with this information? 
So there's two parts to it. One, obviously, on a Honeycomb Bravo wouldn't apply because there's no display. But for anything that's a display or an LED, so in the case of these, the LEDs are tied to their switches directly, so that's super easy. And you'll find it as a button light. For the displays, you add an event, and you can change the display value. Now, the display value is what it's going to show. Display mode is a way for you to turn displays on and off. Display value, and it prompts you for the information. So target display is the left course display. Uh, the segment, again, this is not like certain uh, MCPs where you write to specific segments. Now you need to find the data value. And again, you want to make sure that in your filter, you've enabled the 737 NGXU. The rest of these don't matter. Uh, this is the one that it uses. So I have that filter. Now what's great is you'll notice you can break this down and you can come down to the glare shield, to the mode control panel, and you can get just the enunciators, which would be the LEDs. For everything else, you're going to have to look at all of them. So when we come in and we look for course, so if we go to mode control panel, you'll see course and everything's pretty clear. PMDG NG3, glare shield, mode control panel, course zero, and you can see that we've got 41, uh, which is what's currently in the sim. So then you just simply select that item, and away it goes. If you wanted to convert the value, if you wanted to force a specific number, uh, you could do that. And we would have had those values and you'll notice that for format we set it to zero 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 uh, that way it will always read three zeros and this is how you tell it I want there to always be uh, three numbers on there pretty simple pretty straightforward so that's how you set up a display and how easy it is to find it now what we want to talk about is how you interact with a knob. So in the sim, the same way that you interact with these values. So you'll see that if we were to come into the sim and we were to right click, right, it has a value. But you can also use the mouse wheel. So what we do with knobs is we use the mouse wheel, and this becomes a very easy thing to program. So again, you would add an event turning clockwise, in the case of a Bravo or in the case of um, uh, some other devices, these could show up as buttons, right? Uh, uh, turning the knob one way is a button. Tuner clockwise, I added an action, I sent a simulation event, Again, under your filters, make sure you got the 737 NGXU enabled. And I just highlight it, and it made my life easy to just go MCP. And that filtered it down to only MCP values. So then I came down, course selector left, which is the course on the left side, the captain side. And now what you're doing with anything PMDG is you're setting an event special value that's based on the same way that you interact with it in the cockpit. So because we're spinning the wheel, I come down and wheel up would be a clockwise direction. So I select wheel up and it automatically loads the rotor brake uh, 16384, which is mouse wheel up. So that was how I did the uh, mouse up event. Uh, then I added an event. I did counterclockwise, and you'll see that we chose the same event, course left, but we chose mouse wheel down, 8192. Then what I did to go to the next knob, make life easier, copy all events. Come over here to our speed selector, 
we're going to go ahead and we're going to paste and we're going to replace. So normally it would be blank. And now I would just click on it, double click on this event, click on it again. And of course it takes us into that list where we were. And so now, remember, we are on the speed selector. So we scroll down and we find the speed selector. And the mouse wheel up is already there. We click OK. We're done. Click on the next one. Double click. Bring it up. Scroll down. Speed selector. As you can see, copy, paste, move on to the next one, and you're golden. You're good to go. Switches. So using a switch event, um, especially when it is a or an on and off switch, this becomes a little bit easier. So here, uh, changing the button light, and this is also how you do LEDs on buttons on a Honeycomb Bravo or LEDs on a button on the SciTech Logitech uh, multi-panel. But you would change button light, which asks you for a condition. And so here, for that LED to go on, I would be adding a condition and again going to my 737 and we're going to the mode control panel enunciators. And you'll see when we make this a little bit bigger, we scroll down and there's our flight director zero event. So we'd be saying when the flight director zero equals zero, that's the condition, we're going to turn the LED off. Then we added the on event, which I did a copy paste, and then I edited this, changed that to a one, and then I came down here and I took it from a off to a on permanent short mode, so it'll stay solid. It's not going to blink. So there we go. That was how we did that one. Of course, I always save as I go. Now for the switch, when it was switched on and off. We added events for those. So for switched on, we want to send the flight director switch left. We selected that event. And when it's on, we want to set that to the on position. And when it's off, we want to set that to the off position. However, you notice I did those backwards. And that's because in the sim, for some reason, the flight director is backwards. And like we do with a lot of things, we want to be looking at the thing that we're playing with. And so, sure, I can put my flight director into the correct positions, and if I come inside of here, Right? We can see that it's backwards. So when working with switches, sometimes you have to play with them just to see what or why uh, it might be, say, backwards inside of it. But either way, switches work with numbers and events. And knob switches that go with multiple selections, they do have the ability to override it. So if we were dealing with a higher value, uh, I just changed that value to a higher number. Uh, switched off, that one is supposed to be the one because that one is the backwards way. And so as you can see, now our flight director switch is perfectly in alignment. As for a button, uh, these buttons work in the exact same way, um, and sometimes these can be copied and pasted into other devices, uh, but basically the same thing. We added events for button lights, and then for a short press, we are interacting with the switches uh, just like we would. So we had added an event, button press short. We added an action. We hit send simulation event. We went to our PMDG, and then like I said, MCP, shorten it down, and then here's the N1 switch. And since we left mouse button, single click a button, that is the interaction that we chose. Clicked OK, and of course, now we got two of them. So I'm going to delete one of those events. 
And then I did basically the same thing. I copied all events. I moved to the next switch. I pasted all events. And I changed the enunciator from N1 to speed for both of these events. And then I changed the switch event from N1 switch to speed switch. Rinse and repeat your way through every single button. And you've got all that's required is a whole bunch of left button clicks and some enunciators and mouse wheeling. So as you can see, when we come in and we start moving buttons and knobs and turning these courses and everything else, we turn off our auto throttle, turn it back on. We can go ahead and throw on heading mode. We can put on LNAV. We can uh, maybe do a VS. And we're going to climb with 700 feet per minute. Well, that's going to do it on this one about MCPs and autopilots. Go ahead, hit that like button for me. Don't forget, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Helps out with the channel. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.